pure shockwave and sound wave? Enough. Guys, raise your hand if wave is in your name. There's a lot of waves. So I said this on my Facebook post and I'm going to reiterate it here. I don't feel in my life. I've been watching movies for 33 years at this point. I don't feel in my life I have been undersold by a movie harder than I was by the trailers of this film. Yeah, I think this is even more so than like Pixar trailers or DreamWorks Illumination. This is one of the most egregious examples of a studio basically not really understanding what they have. And I'm trying to figure out if the reason why they did this, and this is what I'm hoping they did, and not just because they're stupid, is they show they chose to not show a decent chunk of the latter half of the film in the trailers because it will give away the obvious. I mean, let's let's not let's not forget the fact that children are the target demographic and some of them they will be... shouldn't be though with this film they shouldn't be we'll get we'll get to that because <laughs> like you can't it's hard to explain to people there's like 70 transformers in this film Ones you could process. If you know the names and what they look like from the old cartoons, you could pick them out. Mm-hmm. And they do the thing that I like that some comic book movies do where they don't make a big deal that a character is just there. Yeah, they they're, just talk they're... about them like they're there. Like, I didn't realize that was Jazz that he saved in the mine. And so they're like, why'd you pull Jazz out of the thing? I'm like, that was Jazz? And, like, you don't recognize them right away because without their cogs, they don't like what they look like what they normally look like. Outside of, obviously, um, Orion, Pax, and D16. But... I was just... I fucking... Huh? <laughs> I, I'll have to go, once we're done with this, just do a complete deep dive of all the different Easter eggs because there there is a there's a lot in here and I'm pretty sure the filmmakers want people to see this movie more than once, which you should because this movie is phenomenal. It, it is it is phenomenal. I'm gonna tell you right now the biggest problem and I know that you have this along with me is that when they don't sell these movies based off of Hollywood a-listers voice acting abilities they sell them off of the fact that hey come watch this because of these hollywood top actors instead of you know hiring people that literally go out of their way to make it so that they can voice characters that you wouldn't know were voiced by the same person mm -hmm. and i was like oh dear god i don't need to hear thor be optimus prime i don't need that don't need that at all. And then I get in here, and the only person who's actually acting with a voice outside of what they normally act like is Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. He's actively not trying to sound like how he normally is, especially towards the end. Yeah, once he, once he kind of becomes Optimus Prime, that's when he really starts to embody that role he is trying to purposely make himself sound like a younger version of peter cullen and anyone that says otherwise is lying to themselves no i i i heard it many many times with with the way he talks and is and even even like as as they're you know because they're younger in this movie he's obviously the more fun outgoing of the two and yet he still he still has that leadership quality. Mm hmm And I like that how they're they're making their own little version of how they start out. And then being the minor stuff like that and having fun going around and that they um all of them 
idealizing different primes is a fun thing and that they actually got the Megatron name from a, from a prime is a great is a great thing. Yeah, I, I noticed that right away. I'm like, oh, so that's so that's how he got that name. Because you don't just pull Megatron out of your ass. That's that's a very specific name to pull. Even even Optimus Prime, I I realized this once. Um, Alita gave gave her admittedly not great motivational speech. She said like, "You have all this optimism." I'm like, "Oh, I see what you're doing." Yeah, it, it's one of those things. Where I'm just like, "Yep, Optimus Prime, I get it." And like the whole. The look of Cybertron is insane. I wasn't expecting him to be in like an underground, like living inside Cybertron. I uh, like every version of Cybertron I've seen has been on the surface. You know what this reminds me of? Gurren Lagan. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. You're you're really not wrong. I was going to bring it up if you didn't. <laughs> Optimus is even in blue and red, like, <laughs> and he does have a spinning axe at one point. It's not quite a drill, but it's there. <laughs> um, uh, he does give a lot of motivational speeches, the more about it. But anyway, it is, it, it is cool to show that they're, they're growing up together and they're, um, Different but similar point of views on things. I have to ask you, before we get too far, before we get about all the other stuff, a complaint I saw someone make, I don't share this. Do you feel that um, Megatron's heel turn was too abrupt? Hmm. <clears throat> I have to think about that because I I don't I don't think so because I I know I know what I know what they're trying to do with this story. They're going for something like X-Men First Class where both both our our main characters have a common goal. One just wants to take it like one step farther yeah and him being pissed at sentinel prime makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. people i think are underselling the literal tearing down of this dude's entire ideology of this dude and the groups of the primes just got ripped out from under him optimus didn't feel that way towards these people he was just hyping up megatron the entire time he was his hype boy for how much he loved Megatronus and, like, all these people. Like, he liked the Primes, obviously, but the guy with the stickers in his locker was G was D-16. Like, he idolized this and thought that, oh, and, like, Sentinel Prime's gonna be the... And I'm gonna give him the Matrix of Leadership because he's such a great guy. And he's going to be the one that's like, no, I'm never following someone again. Meanwhile, Optimus, who did not idolize this dude, and literally, even when he found the location, he did, of the Matrix of Leadership, went, imagine how it's going to feel when you give it to him. He didn't care about idolizing Sentinel Prime. He didn't want to be the big important guy. Which is kind of ironic because, I mean... Because this is a prequel, you know where the story's going to go. But yeah, while watching the movie, the way it's told in the story, it's honestly very satisfying once he actually gets the Matrix. Yeah, he realized, like, and he has to have, again, Alita, which I thought she was going to be RC. That's that's what I thought, too. But I, I guess Alita and RC are just two different characters. That That was very weird to me when I heard it when the name got came I'm like I'm like are you gonna get a name change too or like huh but anyway it was very much a you know that you're like actually good at this stuff right like you get that you're good at talking 
You suck at everything else <laughs> that you're good at. Which him having to learn to do everything else, it, it makes sense. Like, most leaders that are good talkers typically aren't the ones that do the fighting. They are the ones that are in the background hyping up the big fighters to do stuff like that. Now, Optimus, even in the films, got his ass kicked a lot. Yep. Until when you finally hurt one of his friends and he got pissed and then he was ripping your head clean out of your spine. But he's a pacifist at heart. He is. But don't That's piss him of off or, el or else uh, your ass is grass. Exactly. He's gonna. A lot of stuff's going to happen because he's trying his hardest to not need to kill you. He doesn't want to do harm if not needed. But, uh... Anyway, so, what, what was the... I'm blanking. What was the name of the enemy force again? Oh, the, um... I think... Oh, they're like the, um... Shoot, where... Oh, the, the Quintessons. The Qu Quintessence, yeah. Um, Like, is that a brand new thing for this movie? I think so, because I have never heard... I have never heard of them before. Nope, never heard of a bug thing on Cybertron other than the Insecticons, like, ever. But, I mean, it's a cool idea, it really is, that you have, like, some invading force coming in, and then it's actually, like, a third party outside of those two that they have to deal with and how they want to free up Cybertron. That's a really cool idea. Uh, when they get to the service and actually get to see it, um, I just have to point out, someone on that um, design crew was a fan of StarCraft. Yeah. That is a Zerg ship if I've ever seen one coming down. I'm, j I'm just going to throw that out there. Someone liked StarCraft. And I like you, whoever you were. I saw all of that. You're not hiding it. <laughs> <laughs> we were two seconds away from Hydralisks and Zerglings coming out. But I have to talk about casting for certain things because, like, there's some where it was, like, you know, the casting made sense in other parts. Like, Brian Tyree Henry didn't kind of see that coming, but that makes sense. Uh, Chris Hemsworth was like, yeah, it's it's the deep voice. It's the whatever. And like I said, he actually put a voice on. Scarlett Johansson is just being Scarlett Johansson, but she does a good job because she's just a good actor. Um, getting King and Michael Key to be uh, Bumblebee was a solid choice. Like, it was either going to be him or Tom Holland. Like, you you were you had two avenues of how you were going to do that. Young adult or literal child. The, there was no in-between. Yeah. The one I have to talk about, which might be the most inspired casting in this entire movie. And I did not know it was in here. And I did not know this character was in here. Was Steve Buscemi as Starscream. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect casting right there. Whoever picked that deserves all of the back-end profit off of this film. Also, how he gets his screwed-up voice is because Megatron crushes his processor is such a good plot detail. Right? I'm like, he's talking normally. That's not a scar... Got it. He's now got the annoying nasally voice. That was such a good choice. I love it. <laughs> And also, finally... also, also, when, um, when I think, I think it was, like, uh, Sentinel's henchman who tried to put a muzzle on Bumblebee. Oh, well, it wasn't Sentinel's henchman. It was the, um, royal... Oh, the... The, the, the guardian force of the primes. And after he breaks it off, I'm, I'm very happy that we finally got a Transformers movie where they call out how two of the main people in Megatron's Force have the word wave in their name. Because <laughs> that's bugged me how it's took this long for that to be a joke. Just like, just like how in Bumblebee it, it took, like, it took all that time for, for someone to be like, Decepticons, does that not sound suspicious to you? Deception's literally in their name. Also, there, there's a joke that no child's going to get in this whatsoever. And it was played so swiftly, two seconds are going to miss it, 
when they're going down for uh, Alita's one thing that, like, I need to have one more successful thing, and then I'm going to have this big promotion, and then uh, then Orion and D16 are, like, going after her, and they're like, how's everybody feeling? He's like, I'm feeling so good. I got so much power, I feel like I could touch Primus. He's like, you do not have the touch, and you do not have the power. I'm like, <laughs> no one, legitimately no one, Born after 2000 is going to understand that line. I I, I, I barely <laughs> know that. <laughs> I I know it because I I know that I know that song. Like, it's 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 one of the few things that has like, um, like lasted as far as the '86 legacy. That was that was unreal to me. I'm like they, they even get getting that in in the first half an hour. I'm like, all right, what else are we doing here? And getting like uh, the scrap between them, getting their cogs from the old primes was a really cool touch. Um, like in the eventual split of the troops and like actually showing ideologies and like him developing their their weapons in different ways like he literally grew this giant cannon out of anger that was cool yeah and the the finding out their transformation processes was a nice little touch uh when they get back in and i will say probably one of the coolest details that they get for how they're like setting up these mark like how everyone's distinguished and all this when they get separated and uh megatron and bumblebee and the, like starscream and them get sent to the capital of prime also before we get out of here i am the biggest one of the biggest beast wars nerds on the planet i understand they did not fully call her Bra black arachnia because it is a bit of a word salad to call her that all the time but they called her arachnia in the film getting her in there when she was not in the transformers live action beast wars movie when she's the one of the top three characters in that entire series and then turning her into a flying spider drone as her transformation thank you that was amazing mm-hmm uh, when they bring them in and like he sees the decal sticker on him and he welds the Decepticon logo into Megatron. Yeah. When I, think... I say kids aren't the target audience for this movie, they're not. <laughs> I, I think that was that was the beginning of his heel turn when when he was basically branded as as who we will eventually become. Well, the beginning was the freaking panic, in my opinion, the panic attack he's having in the cave and the seeing him bowing down to the enemy force, but that cemented it. And then when him still going to try and kill, kill uh, Sentinel after they use Black Arachnia to get all that out, which was great, by the way. I said don't break her. I'm being very gentle. <laughs> <laughs> I can see everything. Everything, huh? Everything except for the giant tower we're about to crash into. <laughs> uh, the the, the jokes in this movie are actually... They, they're actually better than the trailer made, made them out to be. Oh, absolutely. They only show childish shit. Because, like, this movie is aimed at adults. Those trailers were aimed at children. Mm-hmm. And that's not one of those, it's a Pixar movie. It's a kid, it's a movie for kids that adults will appreciate. No, this is an adult-oriented Transformers film that had trailers for children. <laughs> it's the weirdest disconnect I've seen from the trailers representing a movie in my life. <laughs> Other than The Bridge of Terabithia. <laughs> Yeah, that one still that one still hurts. That one's rough. <laughs> Anyone go back and watch those original trailers. You do not think that's the movie you're getting. But uh 
the, and then him taking the actual cannon shot for Sentinel Prime was insane. He blew half of them away. Yeah. Point blank range, and you just go, and like, you finally, when you see his eyes turn red and him snap going, I'm tired of saving you. Like, okay. Now, um, again, because this is a prequel, you know where the story is supposed to go, but as I was watching it, I thought, oh, wow, they're, they're going to end it here? That's, that's bold. Yeah, I kind of thought, I'm like, if he falls in, and, like, you see him get the Matrix of Leadership, and they cut to credits, I was going to like, that might have been the ballsiest thing a Transformers entity's ever done outside of killing the main cast in the original movie, but, and you see the fighting continuing, and him ripping Sentinel Prime in half again, because you see gears and motor oil, it's fine. Yes, our P ratings is so stupid. But I think I think that was a direct reference to uh Dark of the Moon when Optimus like ripped his spinal cord out. No, it definitely could be. But uh, I I like seeing him going down the self the sacrifice looking more and more like Optimus getting the actual face shield. And Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember the last time I saw them equip Optimus with flamethrowers. Yeah, that's a new one. <laughs> I didn't care. It, I was like, okay, that's a new one. He Like all the Bay, Bay former films always had him just have the sword come out of his hand. And that was kind of it. But yeah, and then they did give him his axe. But they made it a... What I want to say, hard light axe, which was kind of cool, and it yeah. can actually show like throw like shuriken versions of it. <laughs> so that was something, and I don't know how you feel about it, but I really like how they're ending the film off with like we saved Cybertron, Energon's flowing again, but y'all are kicked out of here. You get to go live up on the surface. This is Cybertron down here. You aren't welcome. I mean, that's kind of how you have to end this movie. You have you have to you have to draw a line between like the Autobots and Decepticons. And also, I kind of like how until the post credit scene, they they don't they don't distinguish between Autobots and Decepticons. Well, they do show you Autobots pre the credits. Okay. They just didn't. I would. That's why I was kind of like, "Are we leaving that till the next one?" And but then they end up showing it. I one thing I will give the Bayformers films a lot of crap because I'm going to be really honest with you, they deserve a good chunk of it. That um, that first movie though. Outside of him peeing on, um, what's the actor's name? Oh, uh, t uh, John DeTuro. John DeTuro. Like, that is a borderline perfect movie. Other than the little hornball robot in that, that is a borderline perfect movie, in my opinion, for a Transformers film. I kind of like how that movie set the standard of Optimus having to give the this is a message going out to anyone and then insert whatever I'll be here waiting. It's either a invitation or a threat, but he always has to say it now. Yep. It, it's pretty cool that they always have to put a variant of that. It's a thing that like no other, I can't think of another hero in fiction that has like that cool of like a mandatory send off that they have now. And it took until the live action films for him to get it. In a Michael Bay film, of all things. That was pretty cool. And that was when you start hearing the Cullenness in his voice. Was yep. during that charge-off when he says, and that's what, that's what Autobots are. Like, 
that you get, like, you can actually tell he's been practicing. Like, he can't fully hide his accent, but you can tell that he worked hard to make sure that he actually sounded like a younger version of Cullen. And I really do appreciate the effort because, A, Cullen's not going to be around forever. No. So, while, while it won't be, it, it may not be Hemsworth, like, um, inheriting the man, like the mantle permanently, the way Matthew Lillard has inherited the role from of Shaggy from Case from Casey Kasem. Mm -hmm. But I do, I do just appreciate the fact that someone someone else has has stepped in to, if if not fully replace Cullen, then at least embody his spirit. Yes, because, like, Cullen is the weird, like, one example where, like, you basically, outside of a couple comic or cartoon iterations, if you're doing Optimus, you get Cullen. Even if it's a big-budget movie where everyone else is voiced by professional big A-list actors, you go and get Cullen if it's Optimus Prime. So it's kind of... They're, like... I understand I need to try and sound like this dude, because, like, that voice is Optimus Prime. Yeah. This is, like, the only character per time where a character owns a role more than Bat than Kevin Conroy owns Batman. Like, the only guy above that, in my opinion, is Peter Cullen with Optimus Prime. Mm-hmm. And get waiting for the branding later on of like rebranding himself with the actual Decepticon logos later on with Megatron. That was a nice little touch. I hope this thing does well. Same. Cause I'm going to be honest. Like I said in my Facebook uh, review, I kind of be okay. If this is the only transformers we get going forward. Cause yeah. you're not getting Cybertron and Transformers in these numbers in live action films. No. Nope. You like you can't you can't do this in live action because the amount the amount of money you're going to be spending on CGI and other visual effects is it it's it's going to it's it, it's going to bankrupt any any studio. It is. There's a very good reason why in Bumblebee we got Cybertron for roughly ten minutes. Yeah, if if even that. Yeah, and just we didn't talk about it. This movie is gorgeous. It is. It is kind of astonishing how good this film looks for how of all of what is going on during it. There was never any time where I saw, oh, that looked bad. No, this entire film looked grade A, triple A plus from start to finish. Now, I don't know if this if this budget is accurate, but Wikipedia assigns a budget of seventy five million. For seventy five million, that's that that's pretty good looking. If this actually only costs them seventy five million dollars. They need to assess every budget of an animated feature ever again. And I really hope this movie does well because I I want to see more movies set in this in this established timeline. Oh, as do I. I just can't imagine what they would call a sequel. <laughs> you, don't, you, you don't think they're just going to go right to War, War for Cybertron? No, I, I was making the joke that this one's actually called Transformers 1. Oh. You never get the one. You always get buh and then buh two. You never actually have it start off going buh one. Because <laughs> that never happens. There's no video games, there's no television series, there's no nothing. None of them have the balls to go blank one. <laughs> and I understand they use the word one 
as like this is the beginning point of Transformers. I understand that. But to me, it's like this is the one time where they actually call the first movie one. I cannot recall another series calling the first movie one in my memory. I can't. There there actually is only only one other other example. Um I bet back in like the late nineties when Disney owned uh Doug, they had they had a movie called Doug's First Movie. Okay. I guess that's kind of the same. That yeah, I Oh yeah, I it's just it's it's to me that just the unintentional ballsiness of calling this Transformers one. Like it would be like it'd be different if, the, if this again, like you said, one. This is the origin point. It would like called Transformers the first one. Because <laughs> <laughs> to even to the dumb degree of the God of War games, the first God of War on the PS2 is called God of War. You then get out of the like chains of Olympus and something else that are PSP games. You get God of War two. Then you get God of War three. Then you get God of War Ascension. And then you get God of War. It's just called God of War. They're just in Norse mythology now. And it's just called God of War. Everyone who's talking about the game calls it God of War 2018. So that you know the difference of what they're talking about. But the actual box of the game just says God of God War. Of War. <laughs> it's not God of War Norse mythology 1. It's just God of War. <laughs> And it's like, like, oh man, you want to go with bad naming mythologies? Go look up the exact string of how, uh, of the Halloween movies. The Halloween movies and the Alien franchise are one of the worst, some of the worst ones ever. What, are, what, about, Fat, what about Fast and Furious? I don't even want to talk about that. Because they, <laughs> it, the, like, they're, they're up there, but, yeah, the Fast and Furious is one. Like, you can't, like, I can tell you, hey, did you ever watch, Fa like, a person who's never seen a Fast and Furious movie but know they exist? Hey, have you seen Fast X? What is that? Oh, it's a Fast and Furious movie. Why, why is it Fast and Furious? In the time? Like, you have Fast and the Furious, and then, no, Fast and Furious, then The Fast and the Furious. The, the Fast and the Furious is the first one. Fast and Furious is number four. It doesn't make it any better. Executives at studios have more than two brain cells. Please. Like, you didn't need to make the titles as nonsensical as those movies got. And I'll never forget Michelle Rodriguez. How many Marvel movies can you make before you're just doing stupid stuff? Your car is in space. You used to steal DVD players out of the back of semis. <laughs> The Rock is turning missiles with his hand out of a car. Anyway, th this 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 was amazing. I know people watching this have already seen it. Go rewatch it again because you're going to see stuff you missed. Oh yeah, even Take even I'm friends. I'm I'm trying to find a time to see this again because yeah, there's there's so much stuff that that I may have missed that yeah I, I just had a, I just had a really great time with this as did I it, it was spectacular and like they have some of the most awesome Transformers designs in this for like no time like uh oh shoot oh no no I'm forgetting it What's the name of the transform the the prime that they found in the cave? I'm blanking on his name. Oh, um, it's uh, Al um, Alpha Trion. Alpha Trion. He is a like laser panther rhino, and we have him for five two minutes in that transformation, and it's one of the coolest things in the whole film. He didn't need to be that cool for two minutes, <laughs> but he but just I, was. But I'm, gl 
I'm 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 glad. I'm for for all for all of the like for all the complaints that people had about the marketing in hindsight I'm glad they saved like the best stuff for the for the movie itself. I am excited for that too, but I will say you could have maybe shown a little more cuz this is the only time where I think that hiding too... Well, not not the only time, but, like, this might actually negatively impact the film that they sold it a little too bit too much to children. Yeah, maybe... Because you're going to be relying on word of mouth from adults to tell you, no, 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 this one's actually for adults! Kids can go to it, though! In, in 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 that sense it's kind of, it's kind of like the incredibles that mo- that movie more than more than like the other pixar movies is like more for adults but it's child friendly and that's kind of how i yes. describe this it's yeah like it's it's a movie for general audiences but kids can kid kids can see it but it's not like it's not like they're the target audience no absolutely not like there is five minutes of this film that is meant toward the audience that it looked like this movie was geared towards. And almost all of it is Bumblebee's lines. Yeah. Like that character. And I didn't mind him. I really didn't. It was just like, you're going to have that character. It, it's whatever. If you were going to make someone with that character, Bumblebee fits. Because at some point after the Bay films, they just went... What do you mean Hot Rod was really important and he became Rodimus Prime? No, 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 The kids always loved Bumblebee. Wait, they didn't at first? Oh, got it. Like, this Hot Rod just, like, bleh. <laughs> Like, I understand. He was in the second to last one of the I, live action Bay movies? I think so. Because I remember they gave him that Holt. Hold! <laughs> he was just like a, a stageous accent, but yeah, this this is meant for like people that grew up on Transformers. Like if you if your license if your license doesn't start with nineteen, this film kind of wasn't meant for you as the main core audience. There's a lot of old school shit in this, and that and that's why I say this is this is the movie that Transformers fans have been waiting for. Whether they realize it or not. Yes. And, yeah. it It's it's just really good. And we need to have more in-betweeners, like, this type of subject matter, but meant for adults in an animated format. Because with all of the stuff that is involved in it, it works better in this. I, I yeah. know we've piped and screamed about this for a while, but I'll take, a, if I'm not going to get a live action version of that third um, was going to be a Pacific Rim film, I'll take that in an animated format if it's cheaper. Oh man, uh, like an, an animated uh, Pacific Rim movie in in like this style would be amazing. It would be phenomenal. As much as I didn't mind Pacific Rim Black, like a traditional 2D actually drawn this style, like, legit animated movie. I need that. I need to have Visceral ripping apart of Kaiju. Yes. And, like, you could typically say it's it's Kaiju fluids. It's not... Blah, 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 blah. No, yeah, anyway. Really liked it. Like I said, I gave it a 9 out of 10 on my review on Facebook. And, I'll, and I stick by that. Might go to a nine point five on a on a second viewing, but I don't see it going lower. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a pretty pretty fair rating. Um, one one quick um, recommendation, since these are both done by um, ILM. If you have not seen Ultraman Rising on Netflix, that 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 will give you your kaiju fix. Yeah, it, 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 it's really good. It is really good. I just, oh boy, where, oof. oh, I'm like, I'm like ready to go back to see this again, like instantly. I, I, like, I know there's adults that will not see this because it's animated that I want to drag by their coat ha- coattails to just be like, no, oh, come here. Because I know, I, know I, I, I feel, I feel the same way. 
And it's just like, no, it's meant for children. I'm like, just because it's animated doesn't mean it's for kids. Animation is for of, everyone. Animation is for everyone, and a lot more times you can get more deep-seated hatred and other emotions off of it. Like, I'm, like, I can't tell you that Arcane's made for children. No, that is, that is very not for children. No. It's almost like it's just a format. Exactly. Anyway, Mike, where can everyone find you? You guys can find me on various social media sites at CaptainK42. You can check out my quick thoughts on letterbox.com slash CoachK42. And you can follow Renegade Pop Culture on Facebook and that place at Ren Pop Culture. You can also find us on YouTube, on Podchaser. Consider supporting our Patreon at patreon.com slash Renegade Pop Culture. Listen to all of our podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen. And last but not least, everything can be found at renegadepopculture.com. You can escape, so do we. Absolutely, you can find me, Everride Organoid Zero, mainly on Twitch and YouTube. And until next time, we'll see you all later. Bye.